At the popular InCycle Indoor Cycling Studio in Carmel, members accept the days when pedaling feels impossible and dive into the days when the cycling feels effortless. It is an attitude that makes this fitness-crazed cardio crowd successful in their relentless pursuit of vigor. And here in Carmel, the clientele at InCycle are all living decidedly first world lives, facing only first world problems. Still, through an interesting perfect storm of circumstance, that clientele is now pulling together to help the people of Ukraine. We talk to them every day, every day. Um, sometimes it goes two days because they don't have internet or electricity, but we're trying to every day. That's Ukrainian emigrant Tatiana Arabaji talking about her ability to stay in touch with her family in Ukraine. This well-known local hairstylist has been doing all she can to raise money for the defense and survival of Ukraine. Tatiana happens to cut the hair of InCycle Indy instructor Carmen Berglund's daughter. When Vladimir Putin invaded and bombed Ukraine, the gang at InCycle knew they wanted to help. So Carmen suggested they help. Tatiana. We just said we wanted our InCycle and Yoga Studio community to come together and help Tatiana and her family and her friends that are over there. And um, we just put it out there. We have two weeks that um, we want to raise $3,000 and we are just one week into it and we're over $2,000. So um, our community is gracious inside and out here. The needs of the Ukrainian people have touched InCycle Indie owner Kathy Miller on a deeply emotional level. I'm just hoping that we can far exceed that goal and just do our little part in a small way to show that, sorry, that we care. Yeah, I just, I, I just couldn't sit around. Tatiana's family and friends are essentially locked down in their small Ukrainian village. The lone grocery store in the village closed as the grocer is too afraid to venture out for provisions. Right now they are being surrounded by Russian military that are bombing and shooting and some of the places they won't let people out from occupied areas. So right now I'm very concerned about my family. How are they going to get food there? How are they going to survive? How are people going to get water there? Um, if they're going to still have light? So Tatiana has been sending money to her family, her village, and her friends. In return, they send her images of the goods they've obtained and even an occasional video message of thanks. Thank you very much. <laughs> so right now, bombs are being dropped on uh, maternity hospitals, places where the people hide with kids. It's just sad. I think they're getting braver with each day. Tatiana's husband has an 11-year-old son still living in Ukraine with his mother and grandparents. If her husband goes to defend the country he left two years ago, Tatiana suggests she'd go with him. Still, she'd like all of the people she loves to get out of the danger zone. I asked them numerous times, like, why are you not leaving? Like, why? Like, a lot of people have left. How come are you still there? What they say is it is more dangerous for them to travel right now because at least in their homes, they know how much food they have, they know how much water they have, they know where to hide. But if they're gonna be traveling, who knows what's gonna happen. Plus right now, like people who are trying to leave, they're being like fired at from guns. I mean, you've seen probably numerous stories on TV how like people who are trying to escape the city that are being occupied by Russian people, they're being shot at in their cars and a lot of people have died.